Check, check, check. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Craig Shallowhammer, and for the next hour or so, we're going to talk about understanding and resolving Oracle Cash Buffer Chain Latch Contention. Now, before we get into I mean, what is Cash Buffer Chain Latch Contention? Well, it's, it's like this. Let's pretend that I'm an Oracle server process. The Oracle Optimizer in the Data Dictionary tells me that I need to access a particular block. So now I need to go access that block. But where is the block? Is it in the buffer cache or do I have to go get it from disk? To answer that question, I will go to and access the cache buffer chain structure. So even with larger databases, with more memory and more computing power, that question is not going to go away. In fact, that question is going to intensify and happen more often. How many times a day, how many times a day is the question asked in your databases, is a block in the buffer cache? Every time that question is asked, the answer is given by accessing the cache buffer chain uh, structure with an Oracle. So it's very important that we understand what's going on. And this is what you see when you have problems, when we have issues. Top weight event, cache buffer change. Now that's the wait time, right? So that is the back off during the acquisition of one of the cache buffer chain child latches. The CPU of accessing the buffer cache in the spinning twi and trying to acquire the latch, that's the DB CPU. Classic problem. So, how do we know what to do about that? What steps do we take? W what are the internals? What's the, what is the pattern of the acquisition? What is the cache buffer chain latch? How do we diagnose that? And what are solutions that actually make sense? The answers to those questions, that's what this seminar is all about. Now, before we dive into the details and I explain what the seminar is all about, I need to introduce myself. My name is Craig Shallowhammer. I'm a longtime Oracle DBA, and I specialize in Oracle database performance and predictive analysis capacity planning. <clears throat> I'm also a performance researcher, and if, you've, if you look at my blog, that's where I put uh, almost all of my research goes in, into my blog as well. I'm also the author of a couple books I'm really, really proud of. I do a lot of conference speaking, teaching, and I mentor. I work one-on-one -on -one with DBAs in career planning and, and that kind of thing. And I'm also an Oracle ACE director, which is pretty nice. The best way to connect with me is simply email me, Craig, at orapub.com. You can also follow me through the Orapub um, Twitter uh, handle. It's Orapub Inc., and you can see what's going on there. I'm also on LinkedIn as well. So please, you know, if you're not connected with me, please go ahead and make that connection. And of course, the Orpub website is where it all starts. Orpub. People ask me all the time, what, what is Orpub? Well, Orpub works directly with Oracle DBAs who want to take their performance tuning skills to the next level. Whether you're brand new at Oracle or you've been working with Oracle for over 15 years, Orpub, myself, and all the resources, everything we do, will be channeled to help you take those tuning skills to the next level. That's what we're all about, and that's why we're actually here. So I serve Oracle DBAs. So what's the plan for this seminar? First, we're gonna quickly talk about the key buffer cache memory structures, right? There's the cache buffer chains, the LRUs, and the write list. And of course, we're gonna focus on the cache buffer chains. Next, we're gonna focus on Oracle's B-star tree indexes. We're gonna, it may seem like, a, like a, a deviation of what we're gonna be talking about, but when we get to the end of the seminar, you're gonna realize how important it is to understand Oracle's B-star tree indexes, how they grow, split, all that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna get into just the raw cache buffer chain internals, you know, the change, the buckets, the hashing, and all, all that kind of stuff. You're going to love that. Then as we kind of get into the diagnosis part 
of the seminar, we need to clearly understand the pattern of acquisitions. Okay, now this is like, there's a lot of, it's a busy system, right? There's a lot of people trying to acquire cash buffer chains. Well, we can look at the pattern of the acquisitions. And that's going to that's gonna direct us towards certain solutions. It's really easy to do this, but it's actually kind of complicated what's going on. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to lead you through that process. Then we've got to talk about buffer cloning. And essentially what a buffer cloning is, right? I have the current mode buffer. I need to make a copy of that to make a consistent read copy of that so I can see what that block looked like back in time. The problem with that is if there's a lot of that going on with the same buffer, that can actually manifest, and we see that as cash buffer chain latch contention. So we're going to delve into that. And then I'm going to show you a couple examples and solutions of, of, of solutions that we've come up with with cash buffer chain latch contention and the actual implementation of those. And then I'm actually going to have what I call the solution page which is just a summary of the various solutions related to cash buffer chain latch contention. Um, I, almost, I have that almost always when I talk about a particular weight event. It's kind of a summary page, just like the go-to page, you know, like a reference page if you see cash buffer chain latch contention. And then I'll give you some pointers to some additional resources so you can continue learning because, you know, the learning never stops, right? All right, so next we're going to get into the key buffer cache memory structure. We're going to start with uh, the cash buffer chain. I've already seen it.